Welcome to the podcast of the Political Page blog with commentary from an attorney and entrepreneur on the political and social issues of the day from a rationalist, libertarian, and often irreverent perspective. This is Political Page, and here's what's on my mind today. Hello and welcome to the podcast of the Political Page blog. This one is dated the 5th of August, 2019, and it is entitled, Which Mass Murder Victims Matter? Guess. And I have to start this out by saying that this is not going to be a funny blog. This is a serious blog because you know something? I am disgusted. And I use that word carefully. It is cynically disgusting to watch what the modern progressive media Democrat hopeful cabal is doing with the absolute tragedies that are three mass murders that have happened in the United States in around one week's time. And yeah, there were three. Check your favorite news aggregator. You will see. Do you find any real mentions of the first two? Well, you'll see passing references to the second, and you'll have to Google very, very hard for the first. And that's because the first shooting was at the Gilroy Garlic Festival in Gilroy, California. Remember that? Briefly, you should remember it. The killer was 19-year-old Santino William Legan, or Legan. I don't know how you pronounce his name, and I don't care. The three people this loser killed were unrelated. They were aged six, six, six six-year-old, 13, and 25. They had varying genders and ethnicities. There was no evidence that he'd had racial animus to any particular group. He was an equal opportunity psychopath. Now, the LA Times reported the murders in an article that spent the first 20, and I counted them, 20 paragraphs, interviewing for some bizarre reason illegal aliens who complain they are seeing an uptick in animosity toward them, which they blame on Donald Trump and not the fact that we have a million people coming over the border. The LA Times agreed with them, and after all this blaming rhetoric, 20 20 paragraphs long, the Times briefly actually gets to the actual attack, and and in the very last paragraph it admits that there's no apparent hate crime motive. There's no apparent motive at all. Not that that stopped the LA Times or just about any media outlet from running with their meme. Because the first media reports focused almost exclusively on a single purported social media post that indicated white nationalism. Now, the potential link to a politically incorrect motive was so exciting for them that the hounds bayed out the claim in headline after headline after headline. And unfortunately for that convenient meme, the FBI took the rather unusual step of coming forward to squash the rumor staying that the material in the killer's home was from all over the political spectrum, right and left, no motive could be determined, and there was no ideological link. They flatly dismissed the white nationalist motivation and the social media posts as false reporting. Google hard for a retraction by any news organization. They aren't there. The objective fact is that there was zero evidence that Legan or Legan or whatever the hell his name is killed anyone based upon ethnicity and that white nationalism claim was faked and it didn't stop the LA Times from blaming Donald Trump for it because so deeply ingrained is Trump derangement syndrome that they blame everything from tornadoes to their most recent head cold on his very existence on the surface of the planet. And other outlets stopped short of blaming Trump for the Gilroy shooting, thank God given that there was zero connection whatsoever to any political motivation. But they didn't retract. Their retraction was to simply stop reporting the story entirely. You have to Google hard to even find a mention that it happened. Those facts have no use in their narrative. Those victims don't matter. Which brings us to the second shooting, this one in Dayton, Ohio. Connor Betts, a college student, opens fire in a Dayton entertainment district, kills his sister, Megan. And he also killed eight other people of varying ethnicities, genders, and ages. Twenty-seven other people of varying ethnicities, genders, and ages were wounded. This deranged, psychopathic killer, Betts, was one of those weirdly dark loner high school misfit guys who kept a kill list of people he'd like to one day slaughter. And there's no report yet about whether he still kept that list or the actual slaughter was randomized. The fact that he killed his sister would leave a sane person to conclude that there is a personal motivation to his actions here. Clearly, Betts was a psychopath. 35 casualties. Check for that headline. Well, you'll see mentions of the kill list in an Ohio shooting. The mass killing is routinely mentioned in Leeds, but only as a step to the real story, because you'll have no option immediately after seeing those headlines but to be directed to the rest of the headlines. And that is where you will see article after article, after op-ed after op-ed, after candidate screed after candidate screed about what? A kid with a freaking kill list who was ignored by every authority and family member who knew him for years before he bought a gun in Ohio? 
no. Those facts have no use to their narrative. Those victims don't matter because the real news for the media is El Paso. And here we go. Now, that one resonated with the media and the progressive shills at last because this one finally targeted Hispanic victims. It was by a white male that they can describe, if one ignores everything other than his targets, as a white nationalist and a right winger. He posted the requisite anti-immigrant screed. He fit the narrative just enough. Clearly, at long last, they have one they can say is all Trump's fault. And this one, this one they run with. This one they don't have to bury at the bottom of an article filled with non-sequitur interviews of illegal aliens who have nothing to do with the crime. This one they don't have to not mention at all. This one they don't have to use as a lead to another story. At last they have the nexus. They have their narrative. The killer was another young male, 21-year-old Patrick Crucius. He wrote that he was enraged by the unending flood of illegal immigrants across the border of his state of Texas. He walked into an El Paso Walmart and he killed 20 people, wounding another 27 and he did it to bring attention to what he called the, quote, inconvenient fact, close quote, that the government was doing nothing to secure the border, and he figured, hey, mass murder might be a useful media hook. He was clearly a psychopath, too, like the other guys. But he was a psychopath with one of the right credentials to become a media sensation. Ironically, the guy was quite right in his assumption that he would become the focal point for the American media. The media may be dishonest, they may be twisted and cynical and manipulative and propagandic, but they are, even to evil losers like Patrick, quite predictable. A closer look at Patrick's credentials dents the media narrative substantially, but you'd have to Google pretty hard to find it. Patrick was not a right winger. He was actually a basic Bernie bro. He wanted the government to give him universal income. He wanted free college. He wanted a single-payer government health care system. He was a rabid environmentalist who blamed overpopulation and unrestricted migration for creating a, quote, decimation of our environment, close quote. He was a global warming nutcase. In fact, it may have been the environmental impact of the illegal immigration that really triggered his rampage against Hispanic illegals. In short, he was a rabid leftist. The only point on which he agreed with Donald Trump was that the border needs to be secured, if for different reasons. He expressly denied that Trump and his policies had anything whatsoever to do with his own actions, and none of it matters. For the media circus, shrilly parroted by every Democrat candidate hopeful, there is only one point that matters. Trump wants to secure the border, so did Crucius, so finally it is all Trump's fault at last. At last, one of the three killings can be neatly tied to Donald Trump instead of psychopathology and the failure of every system that is designed to weed out nutcases before they grow up, buy a gun, and mow down innocents. That's the story the media will finally run with. Those are the victim deaths that finally count. Those are the people that finally matter. Thank you for tuning in to the Political Page podcast today. Original blog articles, complete with a lot more information and great links to original source material, can be found anytime on politicalpage.net. That's politicalpage.net.